everyone. Thank you for tuning in for this week's news report. In our top story, in the early morning hours of Monday, September 3rd, machete-wielding individuals seriously injured two people near Hanpa Hardware Store in downtown Koror. Two suspects were arrested on Wednesday, September 5th at 6 p.m. in relation to the case. 19-year-old Nira Al-Baid Iz Oitarang was arrested and charged with two counts of attempted second-degree murder, two counts of aggravated assault, two counts of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, and two counts of assault and battery. 22-year-old Nira Saadui Andres was also arrested and charged with two counts of aiding and abetting assault and battery with a dangerous weapon and two counts of aiding and abetting assault and battery. Although suspects have been arrested and are currently in police custody, the Bureau of Public Safety is asking anyone with information to contact police as the case is still under investigation. 31-year-old Ridial Bells and 27-year-old Nolan Rubluth sustained serious head and other physical injuries as a result of the attack involving both suspects. Bells was medevaced on Thursday night to the Philippines but unfortunately, unfortunately passed away during the flight. Charges may be elevated now that one of the two victims lost their lives. We want to take a moment to send our deepest condolences and offer our prayers to the Bells family at this difficult time. Ridial was well known and loved by many. He was a remarkable person with love and passion for fishing. He will forever be missed. We would also like to send our prayers to Nolan Rubluth for a speedy recovery. <laughs> We now go to Relinda for this week's OTV News special report on alcohol, drug use and violence in Palau. Each week, alcohol and drug-related crimes dominate police blotters. Some end up here at the Belau National Hospital with minor to life-threatening injuries. Some cases are more violent than others and could involve dangerous weapons where drugs and alcohol often play a role. To try to get an understanding of what alcohol and drugs can do to an individual's mentality, we spoke to the Community Guidance Center under the Ministry of Health's Division of Behavioral Health. Uh, um, uh, normal, but then sumong let's say mali marom, malumong sa amp kitalgar, and sa pel ngani al chance ring ira pray na ngani al chance ring ira kalaat, mung sa pel al pasibo al remula, toko ngi a normally nta kal sa pel remul, nung sa pel toko mung kuk adal tilmok, el loli marom mung mopa toko, al ubong adal surprise ring ira ikal rule ko at toko akibat tek ring ira toko, ay ita sa pel la rom malubong drugs remula. Uh, Although alcohol and drug use may influence an individual to act outside of their normal behavior and may even act in a violent manner, there are services provided in Palau that could help an individual steer clear of violence. Since 2008, the center has created programs to fit the needs of both minors and adults needing help. Uh, 2008, in the like you must start to my sir, my nurse and mira a program of mom on the increase a uh, number of adolescents and mem say the home must start to gear a program so I'm an address ra a tell legal trigger my nurse and me I'm saying them learning up to a program so I'm locked up and help to get in my nurse and we're not saying it must say I'll may I'll may I'll not as well to it at the Completely, la mongil. Ah, agi mystery ra agi all just akarsti mystery mystery intervention, some sort of education about alcohol and drugs. Emerong esel, and then tira ti til kiri mas magaral apply ka raklang arati. Some statistics and research data show that a large percentage of individuals who have a problem with violence also use alcohol or drugs, but there is no conclusive data indicating that alcohol and other forms of drugs cause violence. Sometimes an individual may have anger problems or family problems that leads to violence. Fortunately, there are services provided for these cases. We have an uh, anger management program. We have all the different uh, types of program here. And, uh, DUI program. We have uh, 
uh, alcohol uh, uh, treatment program, uh, as well as a uh, life skill program uh, and the adolescence program. Alcohol and drug use leads to family and life problems and other forms of problems, but with help, an individual can change their lifestyle. Many of our clients are going to give them a story to address the problem or to them to make a certain type of progress, to make a story to them to build up their life. Alcohol and drug abuse and violence are growing problems around the world, but with the right services and support, they can be addressed. Melinda for OTV News Special Report. Thank you, Ro. Pacific nations made historical and unprecedented commitments in the region to strengthen ocean protection and conservation through the creation of marine parks and conservation zones during the recently concluded 43rd Pacific Islands Forum in Rarotonga. In the lead up to the forum, the Cook Islands announced an unprecedented commitment to ocean conservation by creating the largest ocean marine park in the world, essentially to promote sustainable development through economic growth such as tourism, fishing, and deep sea mining with conserving core biodiversity in the ocean, said Cook Islands Prime Minister Henry Puna. New Caledonia also made a serious commitment by way of establishing a marine protected area covering over one million square kilometers that is recorded to be the first contribution by a Melanesian country to the Pacific Oceanscape Initiative, an initiative endorsed by Pacific Forum leaders in 2010 that promotes a secure future for Pacific nations through ocean conservation and management. At the end of the forum, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton pledged to create the largest transboundary protected area collaboration in the Phoenix Islands and the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument between the U.S. and Kiribati. NGOs and conservation experts around the world are commending large ocean island states for making large historical ocean commitments towards sustainable management for the third consecutive year. Pacific Island Forum leaders reiterated their call to the United States government to take prompt action upon damage caused by 67 nuclear tests conducted in the Republic of the Marshall Islands. Through the 43rd Pacific Islands Forum joint communique signed in the Cook Islands, leaders urged the U.S. to live up to its full obligations on the provision of adequate compensation and commitment to its full responsibility for the safe resettlement of displaced populations, including full restoration to economic productivity and human enjoyment of all affected areas. Over 30 years ago, the U.S. government conducted 67 nuclear tests that have continued to affect the livelihood of the people of the Marshall Islands. Leaders also encourage forum members to give their support to the Marshall Islands on such issues at the U.N. General Assembly and other international forums. The Marshall Islands has offered to host the 2013 Pacific Islands Forum. To better understand the impacts of climate change in Palau, a new partnership was forged between Palau International Coral Reef Center, PICRIC, and the University of the Ryukas, UOR, for a five-year collaborative project on climate change research. The project, titled Islands for Coral Reefs and Mangroves, Answering the Threat of Climate Change, will focus on interdisciplinary research efforts on understanding and measuring the impacts of climate change. This project brings in new prospects for us to better deal with the impacts of climate change because we'll be better informed on new scientific data on climate change that are specific to Palau, said PICRIC CEO and Chief Researcher Dr. Yimnang Golbu. Recently, a team of experts from UOR was in Palau to discuss and agree on the terms and conditions of the collaborative project. The project is set to take full effect next year. Six policies from five countries have been shortlisted for the 2012 Future Policy Award, and Palau makes up two of the six policies. The 2003 Protected Areas Networked Act and 2009 Shark Haven Act is running against California's Ocean Protection Policy, Namibia's Marine Resource Policy, the Philippines' National Park Act, and South Africa's Integrated Coastal Management Act. The award is granted by the World Future Council, an international policy research organization that provides decision makers with effective policy solutions. The winning policy will be announced at the United Nations headquarters in New York this month. 
Winners will also be celebrated at the 11th Conference of the Parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity in India in October. The topic for this year's award is the protection of oceans and coasts. Major public opposition has led to the suspension of a massive tourism development in Yap. China Exhibition and Travel Group's hotel development plan would cater to 10,000 visitors by 2020, but the Catholic Church, the main opponents to the plan, thinks the project is too big for Yap. It's too massive for our island. Our island is very small. There are only 11,000 people on this island, says Father John Hagelerum of the Catholic Church. According to reports, the project size is based upon Yap's request to material, materially improve the state's infrastructure. However, Father Hagelerium is concerned that increasing tourism could lead to the, to the destruction of Yap's culture. They're going to bring in things like casinos, golf courses, and hotels. All of these are massive things that we have never experienced before. The project is planning on making this a tourist destination. Obviously, it's going to be overrun by tourists, and we're not capable of dealing with the effects. The development project reportedly includes a new airport, new hospital, and improving all of the roads and ports in Yap, a huge development. A partnership agreement has been inked between U.S. island territories and states to assist in coastal and ocean management. Governors of Guam, Hawaii, American Samoa, and the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, CNMI, recently signed the Pacific Regional Ocean Partnership, PROP, to essentially assist in identifying coastal and ocean management priorities that require coordinated regional response and increased collaboration. This regional partnership will enhance our ability to work cooperatively in addressing stewardship of our oceans and coastal areas for future generations, says Hawaii Governor Neil Abercrombie. High on the list of regional objectives under the partnership is the promotion of sustainability of resources and the facilitation of the implementation of the National Ocean Policy. Funding request for Palau Election Commission and the Medical Referral Program was passed by the House of Delegates this week as a rider within the grouper's bill. However, while the President asked for more than $2.3 million, the HOD only approved a total of $404,000 and $104,000 to the Election Commission for the 2012 general elections and $300,000 for the operation of the referral program. The bill will be sent to the Senate for their consideration. Last month, President Toribiong submitted a new supplemental budget containing election and medical referral funding requests, amongst others. The Pacific Endowment for Art, Culture and Environment, Peace, a Palau-based NGO, received a grant awarded by the United States in the amount of $18,000 on Tuesday, September 4th. Peace board members, Minister Tina Raur Marug, Matul Baulas, and Spice Gordon met with U.S. Ambassador Helen Reed Rowe for the signing ceremony of the said grant. The grant is intended to finance a climate change project titled Strengthening Democracy to Mitigate the Effects of Climate Change on Public Health, aiming to raise awareness on climate change impacts by expanding the recently published photojournalism book, Public Health Impacts of Climate Change in Palau. Awareness will be expanded through television and print campaigns. And now, let's go to Yallop for this week's PCS environmental update. Sulang lo mes sertial environmental update tra Palau Conservation Society. Ai ga gi dat tablong al ai sa environment er el al sandei. Maka do mul el congratulate tra adang ai angala. Ngo gi wa ngaseura Palau Conservation Society yang adbul conservation ma resource planning team akmal dirum lo mrek el Lucia A. Meragal Management Plan in Klelang Ayangal Protected Areas Network. Masera ong i mel kapsingil el along e tiul buil el mlarngi a kegrel ceremony el mlarngi o bisrang ayangal stator orior. A Governor Jeffrey T. Tim el chairman el tial planning team a older si tial 55 year management plan el morarum ta era adra state rang ayangal. Tiangal 5 year management plan al oldub ringi arugulang ayangal. Logiu o singir el budu lu e ya state tamar adra blu a mo urior el taut a igel management goals ma strategic objectives 
a chairman rabor dra PCS Dr. Caleb Otto amino da tu ulwa sei a PCS a samariar lo nga seorang ayang state e di rekel samariar lo nga seorang roku state surveilau tiang adir ku le laurior ma PCS a di rekel lo nga seorang ayang lo tirakla elmo ol tauta ai gel nga ra el nga management plan el ang ayang ayang state am nga mo probabilil el bolol dar sel apply el mora mo member rapan on your rule is that I was a young adult clerk, El Mlara, three are hero, El was a Pododaro, Edol Masadla, Abaspasid. Podunil Lomdaso, El Adobes, Edanai Abaspasid, El Moloara, Ol Salel, Abaspas, El Sabel Morlela Utma, Emoroyas, Adrangela Galla, Marod Mayasai, Abaspas, El Kikyon Laraves, Ediabul Mutra Environment, Ablastic. Beada utilian magu pebil. Tiang aula klat kelima pelawak conservation society eluasi. Boleh kerjik klapas pesir. Ida apply aikel three hours el reduce, reuse, recycle. Kompal masau lulu meser tiang lulu klat kerana osis aklel osab aklel lalu gel laklangar raklabogal belu el moral ader belau mama ikonisia. Thanks, Yalop. After the break, a Kiribati man is denied refugee status in New Zealand. Powerful nations commit millions of dollars of funding to the Pacific. And more news after this short break. We'll be right back. If you are a visiting chook for business or pleasure, make the truck stop your place to stay. We pride ourselves on warm hospitality, service, and courteous staff who will always be willing to make your Chook Island vacation a memorable one. Welcome back South Hotel. With our own bakery and restaurant, come in and enjoy our delicious menu. Relaxation is a massage away with Truck Stop's professional masseuse. Enjoy a game of pool and a drink at the Hard Wreck Cafe and Bar. Come see us at the Hardwick Bar. Explore the shipwrecks in Truck Lagoon with the Truck Lagoon Dive Center. The Truck Stop Hotel offers warm hospitality in a comfortable setting. When in Chook, the only place to stay is in the Truck Stop Hotel. Welcome to the Truck Stop. We are committed to providing quality service in a comfortable environment that is easy to enjoy and, and hard, hard to, to forget. forget.
thank you for staying with us. At the recently concluded Pacific Islands Forum, donor nations such as Australia, New Zealand, and the United States pledged millions of dollars towards climate change, gender equality, fisheries, and education within the Pacific region. Australia pledged 320 million Australian dollars over the next 10 years in the interest of achieving gender equality. Australia has also committed to 58 million Australian dollars over the next four years to improve data on weather, climate, and sea levels to inform climate change adaptation planning in the region. In addition, the country also earmarked 85 million Australian dollars for over four years to strengthen tertiary education through regional IT and infrastructure upgrades. The United States, on the other hand, earmarked $25 million to enable low-lying low islands to cope with climate change and sea level rise, and $3.5 million in new funding to remove unexploded ordinances left behind during World War II. New Zealand announced a $50 million New Zealand dollar investment over three years to support fisheries surveillance and management. New funding commitments from donor nations to assist Forum Island nations in addressing priority issues were welcomed by Forum leaders. After a lengthy trial, the alien registration scheme was ruled by the court to have imposed unconstitutional tax against foreign workers and ordered the government to pay back money collected. However, since Bernadette Carrion won the class action lawsuit in Palau against the government, no funding has been appropriated to pay back those who registered under the scheme. David Shipper, the counsel who is representing foreign workers in this case, has asked the OEK to include the payment in, new, in the new supplemental budget. However, the money is still not included. Instead of following the court's order and giving people money that they desperately need, the leaders are debating on ways to spend the people's money on more wasteful government programs, said Shipper. Earlier this year, Shipper posted a notice informing the group or class that a 20% fee will be applied to each class or group member to compensate Shipper for the time he spent working on the case of the class's behalf. Depending on how many foreign workers registered under the scheme, the amount of compensation could reach over $20,000. A 36-year-old Kiribati man is seeking refugee in New Zealand because he says his island country is sinking as a result of global warming. He told immigration authorities that he fled the country in 2004 to New Zealand, but after his visa expired, he sought refugee status. However, under the Refugee Convention, there is no reference to environmental issues. A well-founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group, or political opinion is required. The man is pleading for he fears for the safety of his two New Zealand-born children. I do not want to go back to Kiribati because there is no future for our children there. The conditions are bad, water is not adequate, and food is hard to get, and employment is scarce. He was refused refugee status, but the decision can be appealed. A temporary tent city intended to accommodate the first set of asylum seekers from Australia has been constructed in Nauru. The first group is set to arrive in the coming week as part of Australia's new offshore processing plant. We should be able to move the first detainees who have been intercepted and processed on Christmas Island to Nauru, said the Immigration Department spokesperson. Last month, reports indicate that a number of detainees went on a hunger strike after being told that their asylum claims would be processed in a third country. In the last several weeks, the Australian government has released internet ad campaigns with messages emphasizing there is no advantage to getting on a boat to reach Australia to lodge an asylum claim. Within the last three years, over 700 people have died in or near Australian waters in failed boat journeys. In a bid to provide affordable clean energy in the Solomon Islands, the Tina River hydropower proposal may take effect, but construction is still two years away. However, European Investment Bank technical advisor on the project, Nigel Hall, warns that it could be 2015 before construction starts, with power expected in 2017. This could frustrate people wanting cheaper power straight away, says Hall. But potential environment, environmental impacts and social issues pertaining to the project must be looked at carefully, says Hall. 
In this case, an environmental and social impact assessment will be carried out as soon as possible and is expected to take 18 months to two years to complete. Currently, the Solomon Islands Electricity Authority uses diesel to generate power with the highest electricity charges in the Pacific. But more Pacific nations are now exploring renewable energy to generate power in efforts to save money and reduce dependency of fossil fuels. It is hoped that when the Tina River Dam project is completed, it will provide a cheaper source of power to the people of the Solomon Islands. Prior to attending the 43rd Pacific Islands Forum in the Cook Islands, the Republic of Marshall Islands President Christopher Loyak attended the third Engaging with the Pacific Leaders meeting in Fiji. The meeting covered a wide range of issues, including Fiji's constitutional making, progress on Fiji's return to a democratic governance, the Millennium Development Goals, Fiji Volunteer Scheme, and other priority issues. During the two-day meeting, Fiji Prime Minister Baini Marama signed a mem memorandum of understanding with President Loyak on the Fiji Volunteer Scheme. The MOU is the first to be implemented under the Development Cooperation Umbrella. The scheme is intended to send 15 to 20 volunteers to interested regional countries to facilitate critical development needs to build human resource capabilities. The meeting concluded with the signing of the final communique and leaders retreat. And now for Mike with Micro Sports. Long Blair, welcome back. Huh? Uh, congratulations to Eliesa Delana, Fiji's lone athlete at the London 2012 Paralympic Games, who has created history by being the first Fijian to win a gold medal in the uh, Paralympic Games, specifically in the F42 high jump. Now, the 27 year old Fijian's best height of 1.74 meters was a personal best and also set the new regional record. Uh, although uh, two other athletes from India and Poland finished with the same height, Liliana was able to uh, do it in less jumps, thus claiming the gold. Other Oceania Paralympian news, uh, Samoa's Leitu Viliamu threw a season best effort but still finished well off the pace in the final of the women's shot put. The 18-year-old threw 5.32 meters with her third throw for a total of 257 points. Vanuatu's Marcel Hosi Moli, <laughs> Hosi, that's a mouthful, Hosi Moli finished seventh in the final of the men's 400 meter with the new season best time of 1 minute 7.61 seconds. And the powerlifter to the London 2012 Paralympic Games, Timothy Haraby, Lift a new personal best of 160 kilograms in the under 75 kilogram category, competing against powerlifting favorites from the Middle East and Asia. He ended up placing fourth in the pool B of the 75 kilogram category after a good limp. Good lift in his second attempt. Now, the Paralympics will draw to a close this weekend, and we'll have a recap of all our Oceania athletes in next Friday's Micro Sports. Papua New Guinea Football Association fears it may face suspension from FIFA for recent appointments made by the PNG government. President David Chung, speaking from Tokyo, worried that FIFA, as one of the most powerful sporting bodies in the world, would interrupt, would interpret the appointment of new sports vice minister Labi Amayau as minister for the rugby league and soccer government as a move that could be seen as interference of the sporting code. Chung said any slightest hint of government meddling may ban the country's football team and force the government to comply. Now, Sports Minister Justin Kachenko, who made the decision to appoint the minister, created the position to help clear the bad blood that has existed among PNG's rugby league. Chung, who is also president of the Oceania Football Confederation, said a ban from all FIFA-sanctioned competition would exclude PNG from such high-profile events as the World Cup qualifiers, South Pacific Games, Nations Cup, as well as the lucrative club competition in the O-League Regional Football News. 
Things kind of jumble there. In uh, regional football news, New Zealand will be looking to uh, exercise the demons from the horror of Aniara. <laughs> of course, we're referring to the all-white surprise two-to-nothing semifinal defeat to New Caledonia at the Oceania Nations Cup tournament in Oniara last June. Now, this time, the all-whites will be up to full strength as Nelson and fellow English Premier League players uh, Ryan Nelson and Winston Reid uh, will be there for the opening game of the World Cup qualifying series against New Caledonia. Reed was absent in the last match. Now, New Caledonia has also restocked their talent as well as they've brought back several players from France. So with both teams loaded with talent and motivation, it should be a highly entertaining match. Now, there's no live TV coverage, but you can catch the play-by-play -play in uh, www.oceaniafootball.com. Japan International Cooperation Agency report says the roof of the main sports complex in Majuro, known as the Educational Cultural Center in the Marshall Islands, is in danger of collapse and needs to be demolished and removed. The report says it will cost more than $5 million U.S. to replace due to extensive termite damage in eight of the remaining 14 timber arches in the sports facility. Now, a small portion of the roof already collapsed last year, and the JICA report says there's a high chance the roof will collapse within six months and recommends the de demolition of the existing wooden arches that support the roof as early as possible. And finally, a note from the Canoe uh, Long Distance Association. The season continues this Saturday, September 8th, and uh, kicking off at 7 a.m. So if you want to join in in an hour-long uh, paddle around the island, you're most welcome to come. Just come participate in the fun and have a unique experience with a morning paddle around the beautiful oceans of Palau and Karor. Bring a paddle and a water bottle, and if you need a paddle, just text 779-7754 or 775-7662. And uh, that'll do it for this week's Micro Sports. Welcome back, Blair. Thank you very much, Mike. Good How to be back. How was the Cook Islands? Very good. Really a great forum this year. Lots of good stuff with the R large island ocean states being implemented. So good, good. trying to exercise our collaborative Pacific power. That's what it's all about. Right. Thank you very much, everyone. That's all the news that we have for this week. Uh, we would like to inform you that if you experience any audio problems while watching OTV, channel 29 or 23, change your audio settings to left for clear audio. Thank you. Please stay safe and have a nice weekend. I'm Blair Phillips, signing off.